you turn now to health. Statistically speaking, two-thirds of Americans are either overweight or obese. But this story is not about the American public. No, this story is about American pets. Whether it's too much food or too little exercise, more and more dogs and cats need to trim down. And as David Wright reports, it's tough to blame them. It's no secret America has an obesity problem. And it turns out that problem extends to our four-legged friends. Type the word fat pets into YouTube and voila. You'll find couch potato cats and pooches with paunches. This tabby's almost too fat to make it through the kitty flap. And check out the love handles on this little guy. What percentage of the pets that you encounter would you say are obese? Currently, it's estimated that about 45% of the dogs in this country are overweight or obese, and about 57, 58% of the cats. So basically, it's half of America's dogs and cats are in excess weight. Dr. Ernie Ward has seen so many fat pets in his North Carolina practice. You're getting too wide here. Mm -hmm. He wrote Chow Hounds, a diet book for cats and dogs. We've become a nation of couch potatoes, right? Well, we now have a nation of lap potatoes when it comes to our pets. The answers to this problem aren't that sophisticated or hard. It's simply we need to eat less and eat better and exercise more. Dr. Ernie says most of the problem comes down to willpower. Not so much the pets, but the owners. This is Bubba, and this is a bean burrito from Taco Bell. This YouTube clip has more than 400,000 views. Let's see if Bubba wants a bean burrito. Gone. They say a moment on the lips, a lifetime on the hips. The dog doesn't know that. The owner presumably does. I don't think people set out maliciously to make their dogs and cats fat. All right? I think what happens is we love them so much and we mistake those cues, those communication cues, that we say, you know what, he's got to have this. He loves this. I love him. And we just load it on. We're not dealing with vanity issue here. You know, it's not like they have an eating disorder. We've got the eating disorder, the feeding disorder when it comes to pet obesity. And according to Dr. Ernie, the pet food manufacturers haven't exactly helped. It's a $17 billion industry. And Dr. Ernie says the quest to produce treats dogs and cats will love has created the dog and cat equivalent of junk food. This is one of the most popular treats out there. Top three ingredients. Two of them are sugar. They look disgusting. <laughs> Not to a dog. I know I've been um, overfeeding them with a big belly. Lulu, she basically eats and sleeps. I've really decided that what I'm doing to my dogs is not a good thing. These are the guys. Dr. Hello. Ernie took us along on a doggy intervention. And these are chihuahuas? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, these are chihuahuas plus, OK? <laughs> plus size chihuahuas. No, no offense. <laughs> Elsie and Lulu are supposed to look like this. Come here, baby. But they're a good deal more portly than that. Because I love to feed them, so. <laughs> these dogs certainly don't lack for food. In fact, the pantry is packed with goodies. So the cupboard is full. And, and again, like most of America, our cupboards are overflowing. And so we've got a lot of treats here. And they're using terms like natural and real beef and meat to entice mm -hmm. you know, people like Reese to buy this. Well, to I your made dog. A friend. Yeah, made a friend. of course you made a friend. Wow. And, and the, you don't stop at just one. I mean, often you go, give them one and they go, they go, I want another. Unlike human food, there's no calorie count on the label. A treat like this has about 24 calories per treat. All right, mm -hmm. so that's 12, 15% of what they need per day. So you give one of these and, and that's it, you're done. But Elsie and Lulu aren't nearly done. They keep eating and eating and they still want more. This is a direct dopamine response. What you're observing right there, I mean, the, the attentiveness, I mean, she's singularly focused on this. She's got the yep, smell. Yeah, the nose is out. She's yeah. pricked up this, quite a bit. Normally dogs will eat till they're full and they'll stop. These guys, we could continue to feed them until literally they would become sick, mm -hmm. you know, because they just couldn't stop themselves. Of course, the pet food industry disputes that, saying it's not their fault if dogs and cats like their product too much. The pet food manufacturers are producing a product that meets the need of the pet and the consumer. And it is good. It has to be good. But my kids get more excited about an ice cream than they do about the broccoli. Um, you know, that's natural. But it's also not necessarily healthy. And th is the same may maybe true for dogs? Well, if you turn a dog loose, 
or if you feed the dog table scraps, or, or you allow the dog to eat ice cream. But if you maintain the, 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 the proper amount of this balanced pet food, you'll be fine. What he contends is that over the past few years, there's been a lot of added sugar and things like that. Is that true? Sugar serves a role. I mean, it's just, sugar is a source of energy. It's, uh, it, it, it adds moisture to the product, and it's uh, palatable. It's a legitimate nutrient. But the, the suggestion that this is put in there to make the dog eat more, and that's the cause of this problem, it isn't. The cause of the problem is people behavior, not the pets. Pets can't say no. We have to say no. You can make simple treats for your, your pets. This is one of my favorites. Uh, it's a recipe I call Salmon Bites, and it's three ingredients. It's salmon, quinoa, and a little parsley. Each one of these has about seven to eight calories. Now compare that to those treats in your closet over there right. that have four or five times that. And they're really, dogs love this. I mean, you know, this is something that you don't have to, it's not your veggies. They yeah. love it. It's high protein. It's really, really healthy for them. Weaning your overweight Sleep. chihuahua of its passion for junk food won't be easy. Who can resist those puppy dog eyes? But Dr. Ernie insists it can be done. What dogs want from us more than anything else in the world is our interaction, our affection. And instead, we take the easy road, which is giving them food. And so if I can do anything for pet owners and say, look, throw the ball. Come on, babies, let's go. Go for a walk. A little exercise won't hurt them, or us, one bit. I'm David Wright for Nightline in Calabash, North Carolina. A final note on this report, when used responsibly, treats like pepperoni and sausages should not contribute to a dog's weight gain. Del Monte recommends that pet owners consult their veterinarian for snack feeding guidelines.